When it comes to building muscle, we already know lifting weights and increasing the load over time and the reps improves muscle growth. This is called progressive overload. But how would you know if it really works? In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you and exposing to you the number one proven way to build muscle as well as if progressive overload really works. So without further more, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let's get into the video. So let's first identify what exactly progressive overload really is. Progressive overload is as follows. In order for a muscle to grow, strength to be gained, performance to increase, or for any similar improvement to occur, the human body must be forced to adapt to a tension that is above and beyond what it has previously experienced. Shout out to a workoutroutine.com for this beautiful, crisp, description. So the description pretty much describes on how you can pretty much turn into a super saiyan. <sighs> I wish. Well, my friends, I guess I'm going to be exposing to you the number one proven way to build muscle, and that's to smash that like button if you haven't so far. Sorry, guys, I just had to do that. All right, the number one proven way to build muscle is a pen. You see this pen over here? You see this wonderful looking blue pen, right? And this notebook. That's right. We're going to be tracking your results down. The number one proven way to build muscle and to witness any results is to track them down. And I'm talking about tracking everything down. How much weight you push, how much reps you do, and how many sets you do. You can even go further by putting even how much rest you take in between sets. But that isn't necessary at this time or when you're even starting out. Guys, I cannot stop to tell you how important it is to write down every workout session that you do. It's really important, so I broke it down for you so you can understand. Number one, you know what you're doing. Most people that go to the gym train one muscle group per week. For example, back day, chest day, arm day, leg day, shoulder day, things like that. Let's take, for example, chest day. So when you do chest day and they go back to do chest again the next week or the following week, they don't know exactly how much weight they pushed and they don't know exactly how many reps they did. So what ends up happening is that they just assume that they did this much and that many reps. But in reality, for someone who tracks them down, they know what weight they did, they know what reps they did, they know how many sets they did, they know, they know all this information. So what they will end up doing is when they go back to the gym, they would know that, for example, they did 10 reps at 145 on the bench press. They know that next week, they would have to do 11 reps of 145 in order to beat that last record. Meaning you are forcing your body to adapt to a higher tension that is above and beyond your body's limit previously experienced. Meaning progressive overload. Meaning you're gonna make them gains. Which also smoothly goes to my second point. Two, forces you to break your own records. Look, by writing down your results, you will be able to know what to do next week and the week after, and so on and so on. By breaking records, you'll be able to maximize and capital guys on progressive overload. And guys, let me tell you something about my experience by doing this. By writing down your results and how many reps and weights you do every single week, every week you have to, you have to, not that if you will, if or not, you have to beat it. So you're pushing your body to like new heights. And trust me, after each workout, man, you are hungry, you are starving, you are tired. The morning after that workout, you're sore. After that workout, you're just stiff and you just feel good and you just feel like you did an amazing job and you feel great about yourself because you just hit records. And when you write things down, you will only know how far you've gotten when you compare weeks. I'll be showing you my four weeks, my first four weeks really, in just a bit. Number three, helps you set goals. Have you guys ever wanted to deadlift 145 just as a warm up? How about push 145 as a warm-up for a chest press? Well, by tracking your workouts, you'll be able to. Look, we all work out for a purpose, for a reason, for a goal. Tracking your results each workout session gets you one step closer to your goal. And by improving week after week after week, there is no doubt that one day you will be able to do these things. And if you continue to keep doing this week by week by week, you will soon be deadlifting 500 pounds like it's nothing. All right, now let's take a look at my results that I wrote down and let's see how good we did. What you see here is I did deadlifts for four weeks and for three sets each. Now, as you can see, I started from week one at 145. Now I'm at week four. My last set, I did 245 
for six reps. That's crazy. If you look at my week one set one weight, it was 145. I did 12 reps. Week two, I did 165 for 10 reps. Week three, set one, I did 165 for 12 reps. And week four, I did 200 for 10 reps. Now I'm going up the scale like that only because I'm beating my previous records. I'm looking at my paper, what I did last week, and my track record, what I did last week. And I try my best to beat it within, a, uh, within one rep, two reps, or even increasing the weight. Now that, if I would have not written it down or anything like that, I would not have any, I would not have gone this fast or gone this far with my record, with my uh, uh, workout, my deadlift session, my recording I'm talking about. And if we look at the deadlift chart, the second chart for deadlift here is moving week after week. So it's so far, I am improving, I am growing, and I am getting bigger, and I am getting stronger. So this works so far. I've only been doing this for four weeks, and I'm gonna be doing this for the next year, and I'm going to see how progress, how good I'm going to get. Hopefully this turns to 300 soon. But we'll see. Let's do something more exciting and let's look at arm day. Let's look at bicep curl. Same thing here, four weeks of bicep curls, three sets of each. And I started with 30 as a warm up, I guess, 30 pounds for 12 reps. Now I'm doing 50 for nine reps. Now the incline is a little bit slower, but yet again, it's improving. So as you can see here, let's just say set one, week one, 30 for 12 reps. Set two, week one, 40 for 10 reps. Set two, 40 pounds for 10 reps. Set three, 40 pounds for nine reps. Going back week two, week two, 30 pounds for 15 reps, 40 pounds for 12 reps, 40 pounds for 12 reps again. Week three, 40 pounds for 13, 50 pounds for eight. I went up to 50. 50 pounds again for third set for nine. And week four, I kept it all 50s. I'm trying to push myself so I can hit the 12s so I can move on to the next weight. And if we look at the second chart over here, it's slowly increasing week after week. Another good point that I want to tell you guys here is that if you want the full package, the full experience, take a picture today and take a picture again three months down the line and compare them to the first picture you took three months ago. At the same time, Look at your track record and you will see an incredible transformation. I promise you, man, it's one of the most beautiful things that you guys can ever see, witness, and it'll be so motivating. It's just, it's just one of the best experience to have. So do that if you want the full package. Another strong point that I want to share here is that by tracking down your results, you will be able to realize if you're about to hit a plateau or you're even in, in a plateau. Look, being in a plateau sucks. Not only do you not improve the gym or gain any significant weight or strength, you start to lose motivation. You start to question if working out really works. You start to get lazy or you just start skipping gym sessions and things like that. And overall, it's just an unpleasant place to be. But you would know if you're in a plateau sooner than later if you track down the results. When you do track it down, you'll realize this by looking at your performance and two to three weeks, you will see your weights and reps have stagnated. They have not improved, they have not gained, and before you know it, bam, you're in a plateau. Now that you have solid proof and evidence that you're in a plateau, you can now start taking steps in changing that. Now, whether it could be changing your workouts, changing how you work out, taking a deload week or even a taking a few days off. The point here is that is that you know that you're in a plateau rather than assuming that you are. So then you can go and take steps in changing it. So Nature Boy, you say that writing it down is like the best way to build muscle. You know, you get to write down your waist next week, you come into the gym, you smash, you keep getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. That's a lot of pros. That sounds too good to be true. Well, what are some cons of this? Well, you know, there's a lot of pros. What are some cons? Tell me some bad things about this. Well, to be honest with you guys, there is no cons about this. When you write down everything that you do, from your workouts, it could even be your nutrition, it can be anything, really. When you write everything down, you're being 100% honest to yourself. And when you're being honest to yourself, that's the right direction when you want to build something, whether it's a relationship, whether it's nutrition or fitness or anything like that. Being honest always puts things in the right path. If you're thinking that you're gonna go to the gym and do 10 reps of 145, then write down 12 reps, you're cheating yourself. You should not be doing that. You should be writing 10 reps. If next week you're doing the same thing 10 reps and two to three, four weeks is the same thing, there's something wrong with your workout. The good thing is, is that you know you're doing something that's not right and you should be fixing it and you will fix it because you know the problem. And hey, if you cannot fix a solution, no problem. You'll keep trying, you'll keep narrowing down that solution. So writing it down is the best way in to know how well you're doing in the gym and to know if you're actually getting bigger and stronger or even developing anything. I mean, if you wanna think of a con, yeah, you gotta be walking around with a 
pen and a paper or a notebook everywhere you go. But who cares? If someone's judging you, who cares? You're trying to improve yourself. At the end of the day, you're trying to accomplish your goals, not somebody else's. You're trying to accomplish and get bigger and get stronger and improve yourself. So who cares if you're walking around with a paper and pen? People will actually come up to you and say, hey, what you doing? You know, and you could tell them that this is what's happening and you can show them your results. And I'm pretty sure they will end up doing it too. At the end of the day, like I mentioned, it's you and you want to accomplish your goals not somebody else's and that's what really matters you if this video is really useful and helpful to you hit that like button so it can help me fair game right share this video with somebody who may find this advice helpful and please please comment below and tell me your thoughts about this advice maybe there's something that i'm not seeing here Maybe there's a con here that I don't know. Or if you already are tracking week by week, let me know how it's going because I know this works. I know this method works. And obviously hit that subscribe button for more videos and I shall see you guys in the next video. Peace.